Finding a new tip or trick for your Tesla is almost as hard as spotting Bigfoot. Hey, how's it going? I've had my Tesla Model 3 for a little over three years now, and along the way I've picked up a few tips, tricks, and life hacks, so I thought I'd just show you a handful of them today. Let's see what we got. So the first thing we're gonna talk about today is headlights. Let's say you pull into a parking lot and you park the car, but you're not ready to get out yet. Your headlights are still on, blinding the guy that might be sitting in a car in front of you in the parking lot, or maybe you pulled up to a storefront and there's a big glass window with all the customers inside and you're blinding them with your headlights. How do you turn your headlights off in a reasonably quick amount of time and uh, do it easily? So first, let me show you the long way, which is to go into the menu right here and then go to lights. And then you have your headlight settings where I've got mine set to auto, but you could turn them off if you wanna turn the headlights off. There's a quicker way than having to search through a menu like that. So let me go back out. What you'll see here are these icons here for your headlights. And it basically shows if you shine your brights, now it turns to a blue indicator. Let me put it back. Now it's got my green headlight and my daytime running light there. So a quick way to pull in, put your car in park, just tap the button and automatically you've got your light setting show up there and you can turn them off and now it disappears there's no headlights on but there's also a third way to turn the headlights off let me show you this trick so this third way I use when I pull into any kind of charging station, whether it's a Tesla supercharger or a third party charging station somewhere, if I wanna turn my headlights off, a quick way to do that is to open your charge port. And a quick way to do that is to press the button for the charge port door, or if you tap on the battery, it automatically pulls up your charging screen and you can open charge port. When I open this, take a look at the headlights here. The headlights turn off, the charge port opens. Let me go ahead and close the charge port. And when I put the car in gear, and now the headlights are back on. The next thing I want to show you is in regards to security, both security of the car itself and your valuables. Back at the menu here, if you go to your safety settings, you've got uh, selections here for pin to drive and pin uh, for your glove box. So with pin to drive enabled, once you put it into gear, it's going to ask for a four digit pin number. If you do not know that pin number, the car will not start, it will not drive at all. Um, you can still mess with some of the settings and, you know, radio and things like that, but it will not let you drive the car. So this is the perfect scenario for a carjacking situation. If someone holds you up at gunpoint and asks for your keys, you can give them the key card if you have it on you. Um, but once they get in the car and they try to get it started, while they're trying to figure out what the hell's going on, you can start running. Just take off, run as fast as you can, and more than likely your car is just gonna be abandoned there until you come back to get it. Because that thief is not gonna be able to drive your car off because they can't because of the passcode. And most of you use a PIN number anyways for your smartphones, whether you use Face ID or a PIN of some sort, some sort of security to lock down your personal features that are in your phone, well, the car is the most expensive thing other than your house that you probably own, so why not lock it down as well? 
The other thing is to put a pin number to open the glove box because it is electronic. There is no button on the glove box to open it. You have to open it from your touch screen. Um, you could put valuables. Let's say you're going to go out for a night in the city. Uh, you've got some valuables on you, but uh, you don't want your car broken into and having your stuff to uh, taken. You can put them in your glove box. You can put a pin number on there to where no one can access it unless they have that pin code. My car is an older car, so all my USB ports are down underneath. But if you have a brand new Tesla, you do have a USB port in your glove box that has your dash cam footage. If you've put in a uh, micro SD or some sort of uh, USB thumb drive uh, in there to record your videos. If you put a pin number on your glove box, now the thieves will not be able to access that thumb drive that has the recording of them breaking into your car. Next, we're gonna talk about windshield wipers. Have you ever been just driving down the road and it's not raining and all of a sudden your windshield wiper just turns on by itself? I know it's happened to me before and I don't think there's actual rain sensors in the glass. I think it's more of the cameras behind here are noticing if there's water hitting the glass and then it'll automatically turn it on. That's what I'm assuming. So if you go into your settings here and just go to the very top, the controls, these are your wiper settings there. You can turn it off, you can have it set to auto, or you can set the speed that you want it to wipe at. But let's be honest, if you're driving, you don't wanna be taking your eyes off the road to start looking through some menu just to turn your wipers on and off or change the settings. So instead, I go to my stock here where I've got my wiper settings there if you push on the end here, it'll spray the windshield washer on the windscreen there. And uh, another side effect of that is once I push on this, let's take a look at the screen here. So I'm gonna push. Now my settings automatically came up here. So I can actually turn it off if I wanna turn it off. Now there is one scenario where this will not work and that's if you've got autopilot or full self-driving on. If you've enabled those, the windshield wipers are automatically set to auto. They will not turn off. And the reason for that is because the windshield wiper does make a pass over that front camera. And it needs that in case it is raining or snowing or you get ice or mud or whatever it is, that camera needs to view out there to use the autopilot or the full self-driving. And so it needs to have a clear view. So it's gonna always turn that on. And when you have that enabled, you cannot turn your windshield wipers off, even manually, you cannot turn them off. Here's an example of the full self-driving with the windshield wiper situation. So if I put on the full self-driving and now it's driving itself, if I go to my settings here, you'll see right there are the windshield wipers. No matter what I do, it will not come out of auto. Another trick has to do with sun glare. If you're driving and you get a lot of sun glare from this area up here, here's another little trick that you can do. You can fold down the passenger side and pull it out. And if you've still got this gap here where there's some sun that's in your eyes, you can slide it. You can see it's on a slider here. There's where it attaches to and you can extend it outwards. Slide it back in and reconnect it. Another trick you can do to check your battery range is right now I'm at 79%, but if I wanna see how many miles it's estimating, you just tap on it and that's equaling 210 miles left to go on this charge. Now, this isn't uh, a sign of battery degradation or anything like that. This is the computer analyzing your driving style with your uh, environment, the temperature, the tires you have on. Everything is taken into consideration to help calculate this. This has very little to do with your actual battery degradation. Uh, so if I was to charge this up to 100%, it's not gonna say 310 miles like when my car first came brand new. It's going to make a calculation on how fast I drive normally, 
um, how many accessories I have turned on usually, like the radio, the heater, all these other things that it factors in to how much miles will be uh, left. Another tip is with the touch screen, you don't have to be exactly precise. And what I mean by that is with things like the temperature, you see there's little arrows next to it where you can tap on it and raise the temperature. But if you're driving, it's really kind of hard to be exactly precise and keep your eyes on the road. So one thing that they did is they allowed you to slide your finger across the screen. So instead of being precise, start sliding your finger here and you'll be able to raise and lower that without being so precise as far as hitting those little arrows. And of course, you can always use the voice commands. I actually prefer this. As a driver, I don't wanna be looking at the screen and try to mess with stuff while I'm driving. So I use my voice commands to do all sorts of things. Open glove box. Set temperature to 69. Set fan speed to three. And one of my favorite voice commands is to turn on the heated seats. Give me two pieces of bacon on the driver's seat. If you're trying to open your charge port, and it won't open, it's usually because the car is asleep. A shortcut to get it to wake up is to lightly press on the door handle like this. And now it'll work. Another tip is in regards to charging. Most people set theirs to like 80 or 90%, but for me, I'm about to go to work where my parking lot at my job has a free charging um, station for employees. So I'm going to charge up just enough to where I have plenty of battery to get to work. Then when I get there, I will move my slider all the way up to 90% and charge the rest of this way for free. Here's another useful tip for a charging scenario. If you are not at home charging, and let's say you're at a shopping center or you're at a Tesla supercharger, some of those superchargers, especially the busier locations, will add on extra fees. If, they, um, if you charge all the way up and leave your car and it's just sitting there taking up a spot uh, and your battery's already filled up to what you set it to, you could get a, a, a fee for returning late to the car. So. To fix that, if you are away and you know you're gonna be another 10 minutes before you can get to your car to move it, go onto your phone app and adjust the slider higher up and now you just bought yourself some more time before uh, you start incurring late fees. Another tip that I like to offer is in regards to unlocking your car door. Now, a lot of modern cars, but especially Teslas, they use their smartphone as a key. That's cool and it works most of the time, but it goes through Bluetooth and every once in a while, Bluetooth kind of messes up or it doesn't read it right away and it won't unlock until you're standing there several seconds or you open up your phone and get into the app and you know have it resync. There's all sorts of things you can do, but it's really embarrassing when you walk up to your car and you're pressing on the, the door handle and trying to open it and it won't let you in. So a quick and easy way to just get in is to have your key card with you at all times. And instead of burying it deep inside a wallet or a bag where it's also equally long to get it out to use, there's two options that I use and there's a few others, but one is with a keychain. If you have keys in your pocket, you can put your key card in one of these, and that way you just reach in your pocket, put it out, and uh, tap it on the door, and you'll be let in. Another option is if you have a minimalist wallet, 
uh, like the Nomad here, you can put your key card, which is that black card right there, and that way you don't even have to take it out of your wallet. You just tap your whole wallet up against the pillar of your car and it unlocks that way. You can do it seamlessly where you walk up to the car, press the door handle, it's not unlocking, just reach in your pocket, grab whichever you have, tap it, and you're good to go. Now, if you're a lady that has a big purse uh, and it's not easily accessible to you know, have a wallet like this or whatnot, I would recommend getting a luggage tag that matches your purse just hanging off the side of it, and that way you can just lift your purse up and kind of tap it that way. And if you have one of those rings from Hand Show, that actually works even the best because you don't have to reach in your pocket to get anything. You just kind of hold your hand up against the pillar and it unlocks. Another trick you can do is create a custom driver mode by changing user profiles. So our Tesla has different user profiles. I've got one for me and one for my wife. And what basically the main difference is when you select the one for my wife, the chair moves to the position that she sits in, the wheel moves, um, everything is custom to her. The side mirrors will move to the position that she can see better out of. You can do all sorts of things. So if you want to create a new driving mode, we can create one by adding one here add new driver, enter name. Let's create a winter driving mode. So winter, so I'm gonna create a winter driving mode. It's gonna ask you how you want everything. You can select that, you can select that. Now it's set to winter. So I can go in here and make some settings here. So I'm gonna to go to pedals and steering. For winter, a lot of people change their acceleration to chill. That way you're not hitting the pedal, uh, the accelerator pedal, and it's spinning out of control because you gave it a little bit too much energy. So put it on chill. Uh, the steering mode, uh, you can leave that. Another thing that people do is they change the regen braking settings to low. That way once regen starts applying the, the brake to slow down, it won't really be aggressive with slowing it down because you don't want the wheels to lock up and slip on ice. So you just want it to lightly slow down and that way you don't have to worry about slipping around on the ice. Kind of the opposite of this chill version here. You don't want to uh, accelerate too hard on slippery roads. And if you don't live in a region where there's harsh winters, you could even add a sport mode. So you could set the uh, settings to sport, make everything sport and do that. You can always delete this as well. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna go over today. There are a ton of tips and tricks that you can see online. I know you've probably seen a lot of these before. Um, hopefully you haven't seen a few of these, but um, yeah, they're all over the place on the internet. I wasn't gonna bore you with like 30 or 50 different uh, tips and tricks. Sometimes when you watch those videos, sometimes they're really pulling at straws to really make it a tip or trick. Sometimes it's just common knowledge stuff, but it is what it is. I use these tricks all the time and that's why I'm just letting you know what works for me personally. Hopefully it helps you out too. If you like the video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. If you wanna see more, Consider subscribing and you'll be notified when the next video comes out. I'll see you guys in the near future. Take care. Bye-bye.